My name is Jeff Bowman, and uh, I am the Vice President of the Historical Society. And on behalf of all the Historical Society officers, we welcome you to this, our soup supper. Tonight we have a very special guest who we'll say more about later, but his name is Richard Roger. And we're focusing on the E. Bar H. Ranch, where uh, Dr. Roger grew up as a young man. I want to bring up um, Alta Hester to introduce our guest speaker. Uh, I'm very happy to introduce Dick Roger. Uh, I'm just going to give you a little thumbnail sketch and he'll be able to flesh the whole thing out. But he, um, his family had a home in Beverly Hills, but his grandparents had the B Bar H ranch between about 1942 and 53. And so during a lot of those years, those preteen years, he lived out here a good deal of time. He, uh, moving forward, he uh, went to medical school at USC and did some specialty training at uh, Los Angeles General Hospital in cardiology. He also was in the Army and was, in the, was a Green Beret and won lots of awards for that. And then it was time for him to start his practice, so he started in Palm Springs. It was his first and only practice that started out with him at um, in Palm Springs. What was it called? The Desert, Desert Cardiology. Desert, Desert Hospital was called, though, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So it went from Dick Roger to now there are 13 doctors and a staff of 122 people, and it's called uh, Desert Cardiology Consultants. And he's been a happy retired guy for 10 years, plays golf, and writes a lot of this book. And uh, how he came into our life was um, sometime during those years that Cole Erod had uh, cabinets, he worked with uh, or had an association around the hospital with Cole Erod's wife, uh, Hazel. And um, over the years, he's come back and kind of checked on Cabot's and checked on the ranch. And while he was there at Cabot's, he uh, said hello to Audrey and chatted with her and uh, met Barbara Marin. And, and uh, so the word was out, you know, there's this guy named Dick Roger. And so we were really excited. And um, I came across this old ratty board that had all these pictures. And uh, that's what this these clean and, and the fancy boards came from. I went ahead and, and uh, uh, glued them up and, and uh, made a nicer board out of it. And uh, also these photos are available on our website and also the uh, printed, did you bring your papers? Your, yeah. So Dick has about, I don't know, 40 or 50 copies, but if you, if you aren't able to get a copy of uh, some of his printed material, it's also available on our website. And it's just DHS, historicalsociety.com. Uh, one final thing before I get out of this nice comfy chair. Uh, I want to thank Ron Clisby. Yes? 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 Okay. Ron Clisby uh, came to our first soup supper over at Bill Bailey's place and, and uh, you know, told us that he had li was living over there on the B Bar H. And uh, so I went back to the list and checked with him, and I think that he, um, uh, we owe a lot of thanks to him for spreading the word and getting this wonderful large group here. So thank you. Stone houses made out of riverbed rock uh, were actually built in the 30s. 
And um, the ranch was open to the public uh, sometime in the late 30s, and it became kind of an exclusive getaway for uh, famous uh, people, movie stars, and, and uh, big wigs in the financial and development areas. And then for reasons I don't really know, uh, the ranch came on the market uh, in the early 40s. And my grandfather was looking for a place away from the West Coast after the Pearl Harbor attack where um, family and friends uh, could get together and be safe and, and uh, just in case uh, there was an attack on the West Coast. So grandpa, my grandfather, Jake Kastler, picked up the ranch early in 1942, 240 acres with all the structures for $42,000. And he kept the ranch going at a uh, business enterprise. Uh, it was advertised, uh, there's a copy of one of the early ads on it. I urge you all to, to look at that. It's, it's very, uh, very uh, historic. Um, and it was, my grandfather was a businessman, and he wasn't, didn't know a lot about running a guest ranch, but he did his best. He, he, um, it, that wasn't his main interest. He was the founding chairman of the board of City National Bank of Beverly Hills, and he had many, many other interests other than the ranch. Uh, during World War II, Grandpa was the number one manufacturer of munitions for the Allied effort uh, in the United States. Um, but he had people who could run the ranch, and um, um, during that time is when I moved there. Uh, I would go back and forth between the ranch and, and our home in Beverly Hills. Uh, Grandpa had four children, my mother, her sister, and, and two boys, one of whom ran the ranch for a while, but that didn't work out. So Grandpa finally hired a professional to run the ranch, uh, Pete Petrillo. Uh, I vaguely remember him, and please remember, I was just a little kid growing up there, but uh, I, I, I do know that Pete was caught in a compromising position with some young lady, and his wife Sophie blew his brains out. Two policemen in Palm Springs. Uh, oh. Jim Maynard was one of them. Some of you may have heard of Jim Maynard. And the sheriff, I think, came out of Manning. Of course, Sophie was arrested and went to prison for only two years. And when she got out of prison, my grandparents took her under their arm and got her reestablished back in society and took care of her for a number of years. But anyway, uh, back to the ranch, here's this little kid who, uh, with uh, my own horse. And um, actually, when I was about 10 or 11, I carried a six-shooter, and I knew how to use it. I still do. Tom <laughs> um, Drive here was a dirt road, and uh, I pretty soon figured out how to drive the ranch Jeep when nobody was looking. And I got into town here, and there was a cafe next to the old movie theater called Royce's Cafe, where I'd hang out. Uh, but we didn't come here for the movies, because all the movie people came to the B. Barrage Ranch, and Every Saturday, uh, Mr. Dory Sherry would come down to the ranch with his family. He was uh, an executive vice president of MGM. And he would bring first-run movies down to the ranch, and we'd see them every Saturday afternoon before they were released to the public. It was terrific. He, <coughs> he was a great man, Mr. Sherry. He wrote uh, Sunrise at Campobello and uh, produced over 250 movies. And there were other movie people there, uh, but I really wasn't that interested in movie people. I was interested in riding my horse and carrying a six-gun. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember Peter Lorre. Uh, some of you older folks might, might, have, yes. might remember him, but um, he and my grandfather were close friends. There's a picture of Peter Lorre on his horse there under the uh, Ebar H. Arch. Um, he liked this one big black horse, a thoroughbred horse. But I remember he gave me a, a coin, and I still have it dated 1944. And uh, during one of the uh, weekly Saturday night dances at the ranch, uh, I remember he hoisted me on his shoulders and 
your dance around with me. That, that, that's what my memory of Peter Laurie. Um, I also remembered Jennifer Jones because she used to like to sunbathe in the nude, not around the pool, but out in the desert. I guess she wasn't afraid of rattlesnakes. But this little cowboy with a six year would be peering over the sandwich. <laughs> <laughs>
the area around there, for some reason, it attracted uh, people bent on committing suicide. And there were several suicides out there. Uh, probably the favorite way was uh, carbon monoxide uh, from their vehicles. They would run uh, the carbon monoxide fumes from the exhaust back in the car, and, and they'd be uh, killed. Um, but I remember two vehicles sitting down here uh, on Palm Drive for years. Nobody would buy them or touch them, and they would be left open and finally to, to rot away in the desert. And I remember one uh, poor fellow right behind the, the B Bar H archway uh, at a little ranch, so he was hanging from a tree. Uh, but other than, than the Patillo murder and these suicides, it was kind of peaceful. <laughs>
Dr. Roger, was the arch the main entrance to the ranch? At yes, that, it was. When you lived there? Yeah, it wasn't the only... Why, why wasn't that arch incorporated into this development that's going on now? I don't know. Why, why is it... Somebody evidently hit it. It's busted now and it's falling down. That's right. I don't know if you saw that recently. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah. yeah that's I mean, this, so that's a shame. I don't understand yeah. that. Yeah. It's, it's not about current events. <clears throat> I heard the, uh, somebody told the car into it. Drove a car into it, somebody hit it. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. rough. Yeah. Well, anyway, my name's Chuck DeVitas, and this is my wife, Val. And we have the 10-acre ranch on the corner, southwest corner of Dillon and Bubbling Wells. And I'd like to hear or talk to you about you riding your horse there years ago, and yeah, if you huh? buried any money there. <laughs> <laughs> We just love it there. We've been there about five or six years now. Yeah. There was that schoolhouse there in the 30s. It was across, wasn't it across the road? Yeah, right at the corner. Um, it was on the east corner. I'm on the west, southwest corner. Yeah, this is on the other corner. It was a two-story wooden house right. with a big sign that somebody painted on the side. Yeah. And the, the woman that taught school there had the 640-acre <laughs> parcel there Really? at one time. I have all the history on it that. Was bad I have a lot of stuff that... Uh, <laughs> was given to me, you know, when I purchased the property, this historical... It, it was, it was vandalized and burned down. Yeah. That, that, that. What about the draw course? That was the car course. course. Which? The draw course that you were in. Uh, there was no golf course when I was here. Well, no. That came later. I'm sure. Yeah. That was... Now, Desert Dunes has a golf course on the other side. No, I don't know about that. Yeah. So, so the pool and everything wasn't there at the time? The pool was there. The pool was, there. Was, was built in the 30s. But the golf course came later. Uh, I'm not even sure where the golf course is, but um, <laughs> north, north, north of the old. Uh, yeah, behind the pool the tennis court was a rodeo. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. And there's some pictures of that. I mean, the big picture of the rodeo. saw that. What happened to Monty Montana? Um, I don't know. I didn't know him well, but uh, our Viaje de Portola was the group that he rode with in the 70s. He died, but uh, oh, he died. yeah, uh, I can't tell you when or why. Uh, I just want to uh, add the actual Bar H Ranch sign, Modern Living Spaces, is looking into what it would take to restore the sign and have it be functional as the entrance to I went there, I could 
pointed out, she had us uh, Mary Pickford come I don't know. She 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 did go there. Um, I don't know if she went there during the time my family owned her before, but she's listed as one of the visitors, but I don't remember her. Is it anybody ranch uh, anywhere near the uh, is the Beep R H Ranch near the Colorado River Aqueduct? No. Maybe you should just state where the Beep R Ranch actually is for anyone who doesn't know. Well, um, it was. It's, yeah, if you. If you know Bubbling Wells Road, uh, which goes right into the ranch, on the other side is uh, Mountain View. And Todd, you have to help me as the other boundary. 20th. 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 Right across the street. 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 Uh, north is where um, the entrance is, and that's 120 acres there where modern living space is doing most of their development. And then there's the south end where the clubhouse was and uh, Mary Pickford's uh, uh, estate was, and um, Cottonwood down in, in that area. So it's right, 240 acres, and it's 120 from the north and 120 from the south. Any other questions for Dr. Roger tonight? <laughs> this has been absolutely phenomenal. Alton? Remember that if you didn't get a handout tonight, that you can get it on the website. And also, you have a few of the coasters left, right, Dick? I do. Yeah, because some, some people are interested in maybe reproducing those. This, this is up here. The well, that's not an original. So maybe you can talk that, about that's that. That's not an original. That's the one on the left is, the one on the right is, I'm sorry, the one on the left is a reproduction. This is a photocopy, yeah, yeah. yeah. But this right here is an actual poster, so you have some, huh? Oh, is that on his website? Yes. yes. Dr. Rogers, what do you do now? I sleep nights. <laughs> <laughs> As chief of cardiology at Eisenhower Medical Center, I work 24-7 for 27 years <laughs> And I walked away 10 years ago. I have a young daughter who's in her first year of college. Um, I have three older boys, one of whom is chief of orthopedic surgery at Desert Hospital, Douglas Rogers. And I spent time with my kids. I took up golf, which is my only mistake in retirement. <laughs> <laughs> I still ride horses. Uh, very nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's good.